Hello! Welcome to the Integral Calculus video for estimating sums. The intensity of this video is mild. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to estimate a series by using partial sums. Let's start with some motivation. It turns out that the series of 1 over k squared, with k going from 1 to infinity, has an exact value and it's pi squared over 6, which is kind of a remarkable fact. Um, it's a fact that we won't actually prove in a first year calculus course, but it's something that we're going to use for these slides. So we're going to take this and we're going to use this fact to get an approximation to pi. And we'll see how useful that approximation is. So first off, what approximation to pi do we get if we take the first three terms of this infinite series? So if we just add up the first three terms of it, what do we get? Well, the series would be 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared if we stopped at the first three terms. If you put this under a common denominator, turns out it's 49 over 36. And so that's going to be our first approximation to pi squared over 6. So 49 over 36. Now, if we want an approximation to pi, we actually need to isolate for pi here. So if we do that, if we cross multiply by 6 and then take a square root, we get this is our approximation for pi, and we can actually write out what that is. Turns out it's 7 sixths of square root of 6, which turns out to be 2.858 something. Now, you might be uh, annoyed by this um, approximation. It's 2.8 something, and we know that pi is 3.1 something. So you might think that this approximation is pretty far off. It's not even correct to the first decimal place. So if that's the case, how do we get a better approximation to pi? So what can we change about this problem to get a better approximation to pi? Well, one thing we could do is we could take more terms in our series. So if we added up the first 10 or 20 terms, then we would get closer to pi squared over 6. So here's our observation. When you're approximating a series of positive terms, so all the terms are positive, then the more terms you take, the closer the partial sum is going to be to the actual true value of the infinite sum. So if you want a better approximation, take more terms. So let's see what happens when we do that. So here's a table of data where I've taken various um, numbers of terms, uh, 3, 10, 100, 1,000, or a million. Here's the partial sum, which will approximate pi squared over 6. And then once we multiply by 6 and take a square root, it gives us an approximation for pi. So here's the one we just did. So the, if you take three terms, it's approximately 2.8. With 10 terms, it's 3.0. So the, the ones digit is correct, but everything else is wrong. If you take 100 terms, it's 3.1 something. So the first digit's correct. If you take 1,000 terms, the first two digits are correct. And if you jump all the way to a million, well, we have 3.14159, which is correct. And then the rest is incorrect. So if you want to get five decimal places correct, you need to take a million terms. That's a lot of terms. So one observation we can make about this particular series is that the partial sums aren't converging to pi squared over 6 very quickly. And that's not a formal thing. It just looks like I don't really want to add up a million terms just to get an approximation to pi. Like that's within, that, that has five decimal places correct. Seems like I'm going to have to do a lot of work. So is there a way for us to rearrange this or find a different um, setup so that it's going to go, our approximations will be better or faster? So let's start with the other uh, strange fact, which is that this related series, so it's this alternating series um, over k squared, it actually converges to pi squared over 12. So we're going to use this to get an approximation to pi as well. So just like in the last case, we're going to list out various partial sums, so taking various uh, amounts of um, terms. And then here's the partial sum, which is approximation to pi squared over 12. And then by multiplying by 12 and dividing by, uh, or taking the square root, we get an approximation to uh, pi. So now what's happening in this case is that the terms are, you can already see, are getting close to pi much faster. So when we're at 10 terms, it's already 3.1, almost 4. 
When we're at 100, it's 3.14149. So already we've got three terms correct. For 1,000 terms, we're at 3.14159, which is, uh, in the previous case, it took us a million terms. And once we get up to a million terms, this is almost like, this is mostly correct. I'll let you figure out where it starts to break. So the observation here is that the partial sums of this series are converging a little bit faster than the other series. So this leads us to a couple questions. So our first big question is, how many terms of a sum do you have to add to get the first 100 decimal places of pi correct? So we saw getting the first five or six, how many, would we, how many terms would we have to take to get the first 100 decimal places of pi correct? So the answer is going to come a little bit later in the course. So later in the course, we're going to study something called error bounds, which is exactly answering this question. How many terms do we have to take to get a certain amount of accuracy? So for some special forms of series, not every series, but some of them, um, we'll know exactly how many terms to take to get to within, say, 100 decimal places of the infinite sum. So be on the lookout for those special series that allow us to have error bounds. A second question that may have come up while thinking about this is, is there a faster way to do this? Is there a faster way to get the like decimals of pi? Because it seems like even taking a thousand terms kind of sucks and that's not something we can do by hand. So is there a, a series or is there another method that converges even faster to pi? So this is a great question and one that we won't tackle in a first year calculus course. So here are two other exercises that you can try. So how many terms do you need to add to get to within 0 0.01 of the, sum, the infinite sum 1 over 2 to the k? We know that the harmonic series 1 over k diverges. So how large does n need to be so that the partial sum of 1 over k's from k equals 1 to n is larger than 3? We know it diverges, so it has to be bigger than 3. Um, at what point does it get bigger than 3? And then finally, some other reading that you might be interested in. There are two Wikipedia articles related to this. One is about Apare's constant. So this is about the value of the sum of 1 over k cubed, not k squared, which is what we looked at today. Um, and Approximations of Pi is a really nice article for historically and in modern times, how do people find the decimals of pi? Thank you very much and have a great day.